great thing. Talking about touring and talking about tough, you guys are one of the few bands that seem to be banned here and banned there, and you can play this song here, but you can't play that song there. How does that impact your decision of where to go, and, and how do you maintain a list of all the things you can't do? Or? No, because it's really none now. Um, it's, it's strange. I, I don't even know how this all comes up. It's probably like the same thing. I, you know, you read press releases, okay, we're banned here. Well, we just played New Zealand. Apparently, we were banned there. If we were at one point, who knows what the situation might have been. Maybe maybe in 93, they banned us. Uh, but, uh, who knows, you know? But we went there. We played there. You know, the Germany thing, that's the main thing that we've had a problem with which all came to res resolve itself that was the only problem we ever had really when it came to censorship was just back in what 97 I think 98 you know we had problems we had to sign papers we cannot play songs off the first three records in Germany only Germany and then there was uh, they couldn't sell the first three records in Germany so we complied with that for years all right we played Germany we never it's not like we didn't go to Germany but we just we couldn't play the songs there the first three albums and that's it right. playing every Everything else, so it was obviously it's really ridiculous and all that, but it just resolved itself. Whatever the reason, I don't even know. You know, other than the German label telling us, oh well, you know, everything's all cool now. You can play those songs. So when we just went over there uh, for our first tour of Europe back in April, May, we played the songs of the first three records. So, so you know what? We're not banned anywhere. We're playing everything. We don't, you know, we don't think about any of that. If it is, even if it is occurring, like I said, yeah, we were banned there, but it didn't stop us from going to Germany. We were there every year. We're playing in Germany, you know, so it's not stopping us whatsoever, so, I mean, I think a lot of it, except for, like I said, the Germany thing, a lot of it could have been hype here and there, I mean, maybe there was some instances of being banned for some point here or there, whatever, it just makes for good, you know, kind of press and oh, it's great know, good PR. controversy, so. Uh, no. Marilyn Manson, I think, would be the poster child yeah, for probably. bad press oh, sure. uh, and great, great concert <laughs> exactly. ticket sales. I'm sure, right, 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 so. Alright, I gotta say, um, I know uh, Paul, your sound guy, tour manager for years. I know Robin really well. Right. Um, it seems like you know tour after tour, you have the same people working for you. Almost like uh, there's a little bit of a family sure. sort of atmosphere right. going on right. in the Cannibal thing. Right. I think that's great. Um, you know, I've been in bands myself where uh, there was times, even on stage, where I was telling somebody else in the band, you know, I, I was ready to, k to kill, sure. kill them literally. Right. You know. No matter how tight you are with somebody, there's going to be those moments where, right. you know, shit just kind of gets ugly. Right. Um, you know, do you guys get along extremely well on and off tour? Do you, do you hang out together when you're not touring, or do you kind of get sick of each other and need some time apart? Yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, it's like a half and half. I mean, nowadays we're all got, you know, we're not young anymore. We Everyone's got wives and girlfriends and families kind of a thing, you know, so... You know, I think some of the guys might see each other here and there away from tour and all that, but for the most part, I think we just do our own thing, you know, um, other than seeing each other, say, at band rehearsal or whatever, you know, but, I mean, um, yeah, it's weird, like, I think just everyone's got their own interests, so we're all different people for the most part, though we do come together and play music, and that's what we love to do, but, you know, I live farther away from all these other guys, I don't see any of them half the time, you know, and, unless it's at practice, you know, right. and I think the other guys might be kind of similar, unless, you know, unless you got a couple of the drinkers that go out, like Pat might go out more often to the, the bar scene and sees Rob there, because Rob does that, but I don't go out, right. so I don't, you know, I don't see anybody, you know, and I know Alex don't really do that either, and George don't do that, so... So, yeah, I mean, we get along, of course, you know, we get along as well as we can. I mean, it's going to have its ups and downs like any relationship, so to say, you know. I mean, it's never going to be perfect. There's going to be things here and there. But, I mean, I think for the most part, we weeded out, you know, what any major problems there were personally, you know, by changing some members here and there, of course. Right, but, right. but yeah, for the most part, excuse me, we're, uh, you know, we're getting along good and, you know, we come together for a common goal, which is play death metal. But, you know, right. yeah, outside of it, you know, not... Not too much hanging. I think we do need a break. Yeah. Well, you don't have your uh, Cannibal Corp softball team that gets together and plays. No, a, I play on my own Tuesday night hockey league without with no Cannibal Corps around. So more hockey than I ever have. How did the How did you guys end up in Ace Ventura: Pet Detective? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. He wanted us in the movie, so we, you know they called us up said. Want you in a movie? <laughs> like, all right, you know. So it was Jim Carrey, we found that you know he liked Death Metal, loved Cannibal Corpse, he requested us to be in his movie, and we were like, yeah, of course, this is good. Why not? Sure. So you know, it was all his doing. So if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have been in the movie. And 
you know, I mean, it definitely helped us out a little bit, of course. I mean, we were doing pretty decent up to that point, but obviously, you know, it's just like anything else, you know, millions of people had to see, you know, saw the movie, and, you know, so they were subject to seeing Cannibal Corpse, whether they liked it or not, and, and I'm, I, you know, know a lot of fans got into Death Metal or you know, never heard of Cannibal Corpse at that point, so so it was a great thing, and, and it was all because of Jim, Jim Carrey, so, you know, we definitely... Th would thank him if we saw him ever again, <laughs> which we haven't since then. So I know that that was probably the first time that I experienced your stage show at all was was watching the movie, and I thought it was interesting. Um, uh, Jim Carrey is uh, our website's reptile based. I don't know if anybody's told you that we're 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 we're, we're probing the connections between snakes and reptiles and rock and roll. Oh, right a little bit and Jim Carrey is actually a reptile person and it's just kind of interesting how sometimes the reptile connections uh -huh. connect See, and there flow. We go, there we go. Well you gotta know Derek Roddy right? Yeah I mean I know him you know don't know him you know we're don't know him he too lives well. in your neck of the woods. Yeah, I, don't, I think he lives in, in, in Carolina now. I don't even think he's in... He I th actually, I think he is in, in Lauderdale. Oh, right. Uh, he might be down in Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I, I'm he not. was one of the first people that I that I interviewed. We weren't doing the vid videos yet, but he's a, he's a big snake guy, oh, too. He? Oh, cool. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really trying to uh, open people's minds to to death metal and whatnot on our particular cool. website. They're, they're covering all kinds cool. of music. Awesome. But uh, Metal Blade seems to have been very supportive. Right. Uh, we'd like to return the favor. Sure. We really appreciate them, you know, right. stepping up to the sure. plate, sure. giving us promos and of whatnot. And Boy, Metal Blade's really been supportive of you guys, too, haven't they? Well, they should be, I would hope. You yeah. know? I mean, <laughs> you know, we're doing decent. We've been around 18 years. I guess okay. we're doing something right, so they, I would hope they'd be supportive, you know? Well, you've been on their label that entire time, which is actually kind yeah. of rare. I mean, yeah. most bands float around they'll do a few years on this label and a few on this well, label I mean, our and contract was very a long contract so but then when you know when it all is said and done well it, if it ain't broke why fix it you know I mean we're doing as, as well as we've ever done and you know I mean they're a great label we have good great rep, you know great rapport with them and you know so yeah I mean it's been a it's been a good run with them you know we're happy to to, to bet on the same label the whole time our whole career well, we've got one last question for you, Paul, uh, before we let you go. I know you guys got to get ready for the show tonight. Yeah, right. well, uh, actually, I, I wanted to know if you guys um, get offers from other labels um, from time to time, or do you think the industry is pretty much... Uh Given up and know that you'll probably be on Metal Blade for the duration. Yeah, I mean, I career. yeah, I mean, we haven't got any offers ever. So, I mean, unless it was you know back in the day, maybe, but I doubt it. I don't think we ever have. You know, I mean, I like said our contract's been, you know, we've never been out of the contract kind of a thing. Like, okay, well, I'm sure, man, you know, I'm sure maybe there would be interest if if everyone knew that you know, all right, we're done, where we have no label. Well, then you know, but I think you know, I guess the band or the labels must know that you know, or deal with each other enough to or know each other enough to where. Uh, you know they know that we're on blade and that's that but you know we uh, we have not got any offers you know from any other labels so you know we're happy where we're at I guess so. well that's great yeah uh, you know I don't know if you looked outside but the uh, the amount of people here at Emos tonight is really impressive yeah. it's one of the biggest cool you know it's one of the biggest draws uh, cannibal always does well in Austin right, but there's right. a lot of people here tonight right a lot of new faces I don't recognize the cool. majority of people out there uh, we you know we Wish you further success and uh, enjoy your tour, and, and uh, maybe next time after your next record we'll have a chance to interview you again. Awesome. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate you it. taking the time, and, and good luck with everything. Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate it, and you know, thanks to the fans, of course, in Austin. I mean, like you said, it's great that they're coming out in numbers, and you know, fans that you wouldn't think would be here, people just coming out of the woodwork, that's, that's a great thing, so we appreciate it, you know, as well for, for everything that... You know, everybody's done, you know, to keep it going, you know. You know yeah, so yeah. It's awesome. Well, for Club King Snake, uh, this is Jeff Berenger, Tom Stevens, and Paul from Cannibal Quartz saying, uh, horns up, dude. You guys have a good show and uh, have a nice evening, everybody. Thank you very much for listening.